Hello everyone, uh, welcome to another weekly update um, with what's been going on with Skype for Business and development and I guess Skype for Business but also Teams as well and um, all the kind of things that affect affect developers in this unified communications world. So I did a blog post earlier this week um, around Microsoft Teams and how uh, Microsoft Teams now logs you into Skype for Business as well. When you when you log into te <clears throat> when you log into Teams, it will automatically uh, log you in as a Skype for Business endpoint. Uh, and I don't know how long this has been going on. Um, it might be for a long time. And it's not. I'm not really. I wasn't really writing the blog post to be particularly sensationalist because if you think about it, this is this makes an awful lot of sense. You know, there's a lot of um, interaction but an interrupt between Teams and Skype for Business, um, and the way, you know, uh, you know, the IMs and things. When you um, uh, get Skype for Business IM, you can pick it up in Teams, calendar sync, and stuff like that. So it's not entirely surprising. The reason I did the blog post is more to just to highlight the fact because it does actually log you into Skype for Business as an endpoint. And what that means is your presence shows up as available. So it is technically possible for you to be not using the Skype for Business client, only be using the Teams client, um, but you'll still show up as available in Skype for Business. If you do that, you will miss IMs and calls and videos. And so you won't immediately, it won't be immediately obvious that you're missing them either. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, I thought I'd, I'd just write it down in case uh, people are seeing it in kind of support calls or whatever. Um, but it's, I thought it was worth just kind of, kind of pointing out that that's the behavior that's happening right now. Uh, so there's that. Um, other interesting things that have been happening uh, kind of around the, the ecosystem. Uh, there's a brief update that came out yesterday that everyone uh, should just know about around the .NET Framework. So .NET Framework 4.7 uh, is now out. And the current recommendation is that you don't install it on Skype for Business or Link servers. Um, there's some testing that's going on. Um, but there's a, there was just a brief kind of blog post out to say um, generally just follow the guidance of the exchange team and the exchange team don't recommend, don't recommend it. So uh, kind of for that reason, neither do the Skype for Business team. All right. So there's a really good blog post actually written by the, uh, the bot framework team that came out this week. And it's all about load testing. And I'd never even really thought about load testing bots at all. But it makes total sense. Um, it's absolutely something you would want to do, you know, before you put your bot into production. You want to make sure, you know, just like you would a website or any other service, you know, load testing is really important to to see, you know, if your if your application will will work under pressure and under the kind of realistic production load that you're about to expose it to. And in some ways, my initial thought on this was, well, actually, is that you know, do we really need this? Is this really necessary? Because really kind of under the hood, the bot framework is just, you know, it's just the web API really. You know, if you can scale your web API and your web API is responsive under load, then you should be absolutely fine. And that's probably still true. However, uh, the bot framework team have written a, a brilliant blog about um, mocking uh, user requests. So you can absolutely do this. You can write um, a, like an engine um, to to create mock requests. Um, it's pretty interesting actually going through the process. So you need to authenticate. So there's an access token you need to get, um, and then there's a very specifically formed JSON payload that you need to send. Uh, so you can do really realistic testing, different uh, different messages, different users, um, and uh, you know, um, really kind of realistic load testing. So that's really interesting. Um, I I'm definitely going to kind of uh, squirrel that away and, and store that for future use. I thought that was uh, that was a really good blog post. So um, thanks to the bot framework team for that. That's brilliant. And the only other thing I wanted to kind of call out this week, um, I'm going to try and keep this week uh, nice and short. Uh, the only other the only other thing is an Azure roadmap. So I think this has been around for a while. It's just it's taken me a while to find it. And it's um, 
it's a really good website actually it, it lists out all the things that are new in in azure and you can kind of search by different categories and you can search by different statuses and uh, if you go there just um, by default you know when you first go to the page it lists uh, in chronological descending order so you can see all these different things um, and Azure is massive now and you can't possibly kind of keep up to date with everything that's happening with it so sites like this are really good just to see what's going on what the state is um, and, and just kind of scroll through if you're looking for something specific there's a there's a good search um, if not if you've got a particular area of um, interest you can you can search for that but things are evolving all the time in Azure and uh, you know it's become this big ecosystem now so having a site like this where you can keep track of what's going on I think is really is really useful there's a good there's an RSS subscribe as well so um, you, you can kind of use that and bring that into your news feed as well um, so all in all I thought that was really good um, good good resource to have all right um, I'm gonna let you get on with your weekend um, try and keep it quite short and I will talk to you again next week